So the main difference between one-handed and two-handed bowling is where you start with your second hand on the ball and you don't let go. And then your second main difference is usually you don't put your thumb on the ball where normally I would put my thumb in a thumb hole right there. There's no thumb hole for me to put it in. There are some two-handers that put their thumb on the ball. I will say the best of the best two-handers in the world, none of them use their thumb. And there is a pro, actually, Sean Maldonado, who is a good friend of mine. He actually went from having his thumb in the ball to taking it out, and not only did he win his first PBA title after doing that, he also won his second almost immediately after as well. So he won two titles the first year he took his thumb out of the ball. So where everything starts for me is the setup. Again, we're gonna talk about a little bit of the differences between two-handed and one-handed. You know, a one-hander might use this hand to support the ball, where a two-hander, you're probably gonna put your hand more on top, and it might even interlock with some of your fingers. For me, I just like to put my hand in a comfortable spot where as the swing starts, I can actually comfortably hold the ball and almost like two-handers do, this hand acts as the support system of the ball as the swing goes back and forth. So with that hand setup, the next thing we're gonna talk is kind of the feet and the body positioning. You wanna be a little more open. So if I'm bowling on lane three, I probably wanna be facing almost the lane next to me, like lane two. Two-handed bowlers, you have to bring your other arm with you to the back of the swing and thus you have to actually clear your hips. If I'm square, my upper body actually rotates my hips past. Whereas if I start a little open, I actually don't need to rotate at all to get that ball past my hips. So starting position, maybe facing the lane next to you or just a little bit more open than a traditional one-handed bowler. And then from that, the next thing we're gonna talk about is actually the actual footwork and approach. Your usual five-step approach is what I use and what most other two-handed bowlers use to get the momentum in order to actually throw the ball at a decent speed. A five-step approach is very common. You're gonna start by taking a step with your opposite foot. So if you're a right-hander, you're gonna take a step with your left foot. If you're a left-hander, your first step's gonna be with your right foot. The actual walking process is much like you're walking down the street. You don't wanna to go too fast, you don't wanna to go too slow, but you do wanna just go for a brisk walk down the street, as I like to say it, because you don't wanna make it a bowling approach. You wanna make it very normal to you. First step, normal size, nothing crazy. And then on that second step, that is when your push away is gonna begin. So on that second step that we come through here, which is gonna be with your dominant hand side. So if I'm bowling lefty, first step right foot, second step left foot, and the push away begins. The third step is actually gonna set up either a shuffle step or a hop for most two-handed bowlers, where it's gonna look something along these lines. First step, kind of just normal. Second step, again, normal as the push wave begins. And then the third step is gonna be a little bit larger in order to gain the momentum and set up a shuffle step or a hop step, depending on who the bowler is. Two-handed bowling footwork is more about what's comfortable for you. So I'll explain a couple different options. I'll use a couple different elite professional bowlers who have multiple, multiple titles to explain to you guys the different styles and how it really is what works best for you. So it's gonna go one, nothing happens with the ball. Two, the push away begins. Three is the setup for the shuffle step. And then the shuffle happens and you slide into the foul line where you release the bowling ball. I will say that is my footwork. There are other professional bowlers who might have had a more of a hop step than I shuffle where both my feet are actually on the ground the whole time. Oscu Palerma, multi-time champion, future Hall of Famer. He uses a hop step where he actually gets a little airborne and both of his feet come off the ground. You also have a Kyle Troop who uses a very traditional one-handed footwork where there is no shuffle, there is no hop, it's more of a crossover. So it really is whatever is most comfortable for you. And now, Let's get into actually what happens at the foul line and truly how you hook a bowling ball two-handed, which is with the release. So at the line with this helping hand, the ball is gonna be almost cupped all the way up on my forearm. And then as I release it, it's gonna uncoil and you're gonna just basically let go of the ball, which is where all of the revolutions, all of the hook down lane actually comes from. So rev rate is what creates hook. And the more underneath your hand is, the more rev rate you're generally gonna have which is the immediate benefit of two-handed bowling, and it's much easier and more efficient and effective when you bowl two-handed to get your hand actually underneath the ball. So this hand all the way cupped at the bottom while you're releasing it, that's where all the power, all the rev rate, and all the hook comes from.
So this is just the basics of two-handed bowling. If you guys wanna get into more detail, two-handed bowling or one-handed bowling, we have over 80 videos on howtobowl.com. The link is down below. The course is taught by PBA champions, such as myself and Darren Tang. And this again, like I said, is really where you get into the meat and the details of how to improve your game. You guys can use code PACKY for 20% off the annual plan at howtobowl.com. Give you guys a special discount on the website. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on howtobowl.com. Unless you guys don't wanna get better, then I won't see you there.